Section 22 of the National Geographic Magazine, Volume 5. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Larry Wilson. The Relations of the Gulf Stream and the Labrador Current by William Libby, Jr. The problem assigned to the writer in the fall of 1888 by Colonel MacDonald, the United States Commissioner of Fish and Fisheries, was the study of the movements of the schools of fish along a portion of the Atlantic coast. These movements have been a constant puzzle to the fishermen in their efforts to follow the schools. The object of our investigation was to see if some relation could be discovered between the changes in temperature in the water and the migrations of the fish which inhabit it. Colonel MacDonald has shown that such a connection exists in his researches on the shad, and the same was found true in Professor Good's study of the Menhaden. We attempted to verify this on a larger scale and in a systematic manner. The United States Fish Commission schooner Grampus was placed at our disposal and especially equipped for the work assigned to the party. The body of water off the New England coast was chosen because it was supposed that in this region the contrast between the currents would be more distinctly shown from the fact of their being forced together by the projection of the mainland so far southward from its general curve. And this expectation was realized in the course of the work. We aimed to cover the space lying between Block Island and Nantucket and extending southward to a distance of 150 miles from the land with a network of stations which should be 10 miles apart in all directions, and on which, at as regular intervals as possible, observations were to be made. These observations related to the temperature and specific gravity of the surface water, together with a regular hourly series of meteorological observations, and serial observations were made on the temperature of the water at each of the several stations. In the serial temperature work, the thermometers were fastened to a wire cable of 19 strands of number 24 crucible steel music wire, with a breaking strain of 1,500 pounds. The interval between the instruments varied as the depth increased. They were placed closer together where the changes were quickest, that is, near the surface and where the temperatures became more regular, they were placed further apart. We only adopted a regular system for the distribution of the thermometers along the cable after having examined the whole area to be studied from north to south along several lines, and were sure that all the facts were covered by the system. The area was studied by running out a series of lines ten miles apart, along which at intervals of ten miles the stations were made. These lines were repeated as often as possible, and temperature profile curves were plotted along these lines based on the observations made at the stations. On most of these temperature profiles, we have given the curves of 70 degrees, 60 degrees, and 50 degrees as being the most important. The 50 degree curve has been an interesting one from the beginning, as it was the means of showing us that there were two sets of conditions under which the two measurably distinct bodies of water came in contact. It will be convenient to speak of these two portions of the main current of the Gulf Stream separately. I shall therefore speak of the upper portion first. The boundary between the cold and the warm currents of the surface is very seldom a straight line, perpendicular to the surface. It marks the position of the resultant of all the forces at work. Of course, the general position of the boundary will be determined by the velocities of the two bodies and the direction of their currents when they come in contact. If we leave out of consideration the wind as an effective agent in the production and directing of the ocean currents, we find that it becomes a most potent factor in the changes which are produced in the position of this line at the surface. The winds sway the surface of these currents one way or another, sometimes for many miles, and they may retard or reinforce the currents in their flow. The winds which blow over this portion of the northern Atlantic may for convenience be grouped in two classes. 
one may be said to blow in a southeasterly direction and the other in a northwesterly direction the general tendency of the first group or the summer set will be to drive the warmer water at the surface over toward the coast thus forcing them above the colder waters of the labrador current the other or winter set may be considered to have the opposite effect on these waters and the final position reached after a cycle is completed will depend on the relative velocities of the winds it is not denied that there are other factors which enter into this result nor that this position is not affected by the physical characters of the waters to wit their relative temperatures densities etc but it is claimed that after due allowance for other factors the winds are the most active causes of the daily and seasonal variations which take place in this boundary while these motions may equalize one another and the resultant position remain the same from year to year it is supposable that there may be an excess in one of these directions for a series of years with the result that the boundary will be carried far inshore from its normal position and thus to a great extent obliterate the surface indications of the other current near the surface or portion here only general causes which produce and modify the currents in the oceans can produce any changes unless by the cumulative effect spoken of in the previous section modifications are brought about as a rule however the variations referred to might almost be classed as accidental because they are rarely productive of changes below twenty five fathoms when these changes are brought about they are usually of such a character as to evade detection unless the average of many observations are carefully studied when the change in the position of the resultant can be seen these two portions of the gulf stream are therefore seen to have different characters the lower one being more steady and constant is further characterized by the slight changes which take place in it the upper one on the other hand might be said to be characterized by the rapidity of its changes of position as has been said the fifty degree temperature curve is the line which bounds these two portions the shape of this curve beyond the edge of the continental platform is that of the letter s inverted the lower part of the letter represents the main body or lower portion of the gulf stream in the year eighteen eighty nine the lower portion did not touch the edge of the continental platform at any point within the area we were studying in eighteen ninety this portion of the curve touched both at block island and at nantucket in the latter part of the season and in eighteen ninety one it touched along the whole edge of the greater part of all the summer months the change which was thus produced in the temperature at the bottom along the edge of the continental platform was somewhere in the neighborhood of ten degrees an item of considerable importance the effect produced by this temperature change can be seen to best advantage by reference to the very interesting problem in biology on which it directly bears in the years eighteen eighty and eighteen eighty one a new edible fish was found in considerable numbers in the area we were studying and had attracted so much attention among fishermen that preparations were made to take it on a commercial scale for the new york and boston markets during the ensuing season unfortunately it happened however early in the summer of eighteen eighty two before the fishermen could enter upon their work that the water from cape may to nantucket in a long crescent-like curve following the continental edge was covered with the bodies of this fish dead and dying in countless millions from that time the tile fish lophilatilus gemcellion lyceps disappeared from this area entirely and attempts to find the fish since that time have been unsuccessful the subject moreover had become a sort of biologic puzzle fortunately the temperature of the water in which the fish was caught had been noted at a number of points in studying over the three sets of profiles for the three years eighteen eighty nine eighteen ninety and eighteen ninety one obtained from our work i noticed the fact that there had been a progressive movement of the warm body of water toward the shore and saw plainly that if the same rate were to hold good this year 
the whole of the continental edge of the area in question would in all probability be covered by the warm water the idea then suggested itself that if such were the case the conditions for the reappearance of the tile fish would be established if environment meant anything in the case the fish had been previously in a depth of water varying from seventy to one hundred twenty fathoms and its feeding ground being on the bottom would occur just at the edge of the platform it was probably moreover a tropical deep-sea fish and the temperature at which it was caught fifty degrees to fifty eight degrees could only be established on the new england coast by just such an invasion of the continental edge as has been described it is only necessary to conceive that the whole of the continental edge from florida to nantucket is thus overflowed by this warm band of water to see how the regular feeding ground of a tropical fish could be extended so that the fish could follow it throughout the whole of this largely increased area while well, in the midst of this interesting theoretic work i was aroused by a letter from washington from colonel macdonald stating that owing to an economical turn congress had largely reduced the appropriation for the commission so that we should have to give up a great portion of the scientific work i went to washington with my facts and they interested the commissioner to such an extent that he agreed to give me the chance to test the theory and further expressed a wish to take part in the work himself we first went out south of martha vineyard found that the temperature was right set the trawl lines and caught the fish during the next two months i spent considerable time in tracing up the area over which the temperature of fifty degrees and over was to be found on the continental edge fishing at the same time with the trawls to see if the fish were there we found them all the way to the delaware capes and were satisfied that though they were not numerous they had taken advantage of changed conditions over the area to occupy an enlarged feeding ground the explanation of the disappearance of the fish in eighteen eighty two as suggested by colonel macdonald seems now to cover the ground perfectly if we suppose this area to have been flooded by warm water in the years previous to that date in the manner suggested above it is easy to see that when this warm band receded the first break in its continuity would occur in that extreme part of the bend in the coast between cape may and nantucket the fish over this portion of the bottom would in the event of the withdrawal of the warm water be suddenly exposed to a bath of water of sufficient degree of coldness to benumb them and start them on their way to the surface after they had reached a point in the water which marked the limit of their adjustment to water pressure they were bound to go the rest of the way to the top where they arrived in abnormal conditions as their bodies were all puffed up and in most instances their stomachs protruded from their mouths as a result of the diminution of pressure this study of the environment of the life forms in this area has therefore led to interesting results it is to be hoped that congress will some day see the connection between pure and applied scientific work clearly enough to enable them to supply the means for carrying out of investigations which can lead to practical results and that the scientific commissions of the government will not be forced to suffer through the lack of intelligent support which should be given them. End of section 22